Wow, this is such a nice place and it's so huge. Of course, it has to be huge. This campus is the largest one amongst the IITs. Today in 2014, there are almost 10,000 students, 700 faculty members, close to 1,000 non-teaching staff working here. On the whole, there are 36 departments, schools and centers running here today. Well, Dadu, mm -hmm. you had told me while we were coming here mm -hmm. that this place has a unique history and that it was once a jail for freedom fighters. No, that is not this building. This is the main building. I was talking about the old building, which is now called Hijli Shaheed Bhavan. Let's go there, shall we? Come. This is the building, which was once a jail, or rather a detention camp. This one? But this does not look old at all, and not even like a jail. It's only natural. You know why? Listen, the then Lieutenant Governor of Bengal, Andrew Fraser, once decided to divide Bengal and Midnapur into two parts. He sent the proposal of this plan to the Viceroy at that time, Lord Curzon. So, Midnapur district was to be divided into two parts, Midnapur and Hijli respectively. So, around the year 1913, they bought a huge chunk of dense forest land called Sonamukhi Mauza right here next to Kharagpur and started the construction of this building. But the plan was never executed. And why was that? Firstly, a lot of people from different strata of society protested the execution of this plan. And secondly, because the government fell short of funds to carry out this plan. Another important factor was shortage of drinking water. In 1921, the proposal of dividing the district was finally scrapped. Meanwhile, the entire country was witnessing an upheaval of freedom struggle. In 1927, Dinesh Gupta formed a branch of Bengal volunteers in Midnapur. And there were some other strong revolutionary organizations like Jugantar and Anushilan Samiti. And on the path of non-violence, the Congress was also at its peak of revolutionary spirits. How is all this connected to this building? How did this place become a detention camp? For that, you need to know about the Indian history of 1930s. Do you? Hmm, 1930. That year, Gandhiji started the civil disobedience movement triggered by the Dandi Salt March on 12th of March, followed by the boycott of British goods. So the freedom struggle was basically a huge wave of disturbance and annoyance for the British government, which made them amend the Bengal criminal law in April 1930, which resulted in the arrest of a large number of freedom fighters, who were revolutionaries and not thieves or decoits or murderers. To house all these people, three detention camps were opened. One in Baksardur, one in Bahrampur, and one right here in Hijri. Almost 200 detainees were put here in this detention camp. Okay, now I get it. This building was lying empty, so it was converted to a detention camp. Correct. Now as you see, this building was surrounded by a 10 feet high wall, and outside, there was a barbed wire fencing. The camp was guarded day and night by armed sepoys. Beyond the walls, there was a dense forest. So you can understand that escaping from the camp was next to impossible. The detainees used to play football at the surrounding fields and even perform theatre here. Not only that, a lot of detainees gave their university exams from here itself. The detainees were left open during the day. Only at night, they were kept under lock and key. You had said that even female inmates used to stay here? Not here. Outside this compound, there was a special jail for women. Let's go there. You know, almost all the female revolutionaries that we know of have spent time at this place at some point in their lives. But the women's jail 
was quite different from the men's jail. But this place seems much smaller and more suffocating than the men's jail. What you see here is what has become of this place in all these years. At one point, this area was much more open and spacious, just like the men's jail. You know, various women detainees have written about how they would try and make their listless detainee lives interesting by the sheer force of willpower. Were there no hardships faced by these people? Not exactly. This place was infested with snakes and scorpions and life-taking malaria mosquitoes. A lot of women detainees suffered direly at the hands of malaria. Thanks to the nursing of enterprising women like Indumati Sinha and Leela Nag, they used to get well soon. They would take turns in cooking for everybody. It's very surprising, na, that they did all these things in the given circumstances. Yes, that is because together they could surpass everything with oneness and willpower. The strength that bound them was patriotism. These strong women could very well transform their dreary lives into fun-filled times, indulging in singing, literature, studying, painting or nurturing flowers in a colourful garden, along with conducting plays and dance dramas. I actually feel like staying here with these women <laughs> and getting to kill one or two tyrant Britishers. <laughs> Where will you get Britishers now? Today, the greatest enemy of our country is the lack of education, which we have to fight constantly. Anyway, despite everything, the young detainee's life would turn dull and helpless. And that was the main objective of this place. And what about the men's jail? You can see it was worse there. There was one fellow, Dhirain Bose, a member of the Anushilan Samiti, who lost his mental balance during his stay here. Another detainee named Brajendranath Chaudhary, who was involved in the Chittagong Armory raid, had committed suicide most probably right here. At the time of the incident, a certain E.B.H. Baker was commandant in charge of the camp. Although he was an extremely warm-hearted person, in favour of ensuring the welfare of the detainees, the head of the guards, Marshall was almost like a demon in disguise for the detainees. And it was their bad luck that Marshall's right-hand man was a Bengali. Assistant Commandant Anath Bondu Chakravarti. Not only by the Britishers, but they were also tortured by the extreme shortage of drinking water during summer. These detainees would at most times be cut off from the world outside. Because the newspapers that they would get to read would always have all the political news covered with the black ink. That's why whenever any revolutionary was brought to the camp, the detainees spared no time to get the news of the outside world. 28th July 1931 was one such day when they came to know about the killing of Judge Garlic who had sentenced Dinesh of the Binoy Badal and Dinesh trio to be hung till death. They started celebrating immediately. They even decorated this tower with lights. Such was the fervour of the celebrations. How brave of them! And what was Marshall's reaction to all of this? He didn't really react on that day, but he was so angry that he started planning a brutal conspiracy against the detainees. And what happened after that made him lose his patience altogether. What happened? On the 15th of September, three revolutionaries, Nalini Das, Phoni Das and Chintamani Das 
escaped the campgrounds, as a result of which the Britishers were very irritated and annoyed. The next day, that is 16th of September 1931, all the English officers left the campgrounds to go to the Kharagpur European Club. The detainees were left at the mercy of the Indian guards who had foolproof orders torturing the detainees. The day after was the birthday of writer Sarat Chandra. In the night, at around 9, the detainees were planning how to celebrate the writer's birthday. Suddenly, they heard shouts from the downstairs and gunfire. Then what happened? Two revolutionaries, Santosh Kumar Mitra and Tarkeshwar Sen Gupta, died on the spot. A lot of people were hit with bullets, injuring them. In all, around 30 people were injured who were taken to the Kharagpur Railway Hospital. The British officials had all intentions of concealing the incident. But the detainees did not let that happen. They started a hunger strike and sat around the bodies of the martyrs, refusing to hand them over to anybody but the near and dear ones of the deceased or to a national leader. I don't think the Britishers accepted this demand. But how did the detainees spread the news outside? Fortunately, the very next day, the mother of two detainees, Kali Bilas and Srimanto Bhattacharya, went there to visit her sons. It was through her that the detainees sent the written description of the incident to Kolkata. She handed over this written note to Anand Bazar Patrika, which in turn wasted no time in publishing the news in a special evening edition. Overnight, this news spread like wildfire through the city of Kolkata and in turn the rest of the country. People were fuming against the Britishers when they heard the news. And what happened in Hijli after that? The next day, Subhash Chandra Bose himself came to Hijli along with Jatindra Mohan Sen Gupta and Ripendra Banerjee to claim the dead bodies of Santosh Kumar Mitra and Tarkeshwar Sen Gupta from the detainees. On his return to Kolkata, Subhash Chandra Bose addressed the countrymen. I have returned from Kharagpur with unspeakable pain. Would we engage in petty quarrels when our friends are shot like cats and dogs inside the jail? He continued. So this day, the only cry that rings out from our heart is, let on the blood of the martyrs be built up the edifice of freedom. Rabindranath, then 70 years old, and in spite of his failing health, presided over a huge protest rally at the monument in Kolkata on 26 September 1931. 
and no justice was given to the people affected by this incident there was an inquiry committee looking into the matter but that was mostly a farce according to the verdict of this committee the killers were merely transferred to different jails as punishment and for the task of disciplining the detainees a special military commandant captain wills was taken in how absurd is that it was as a protest against that incident and the unfair verdict passed that rabindranath penned his famous poem proshno i know the poem and all the verses make a lot of sense now how is that for example this line ami je dekhechi gopon hingsha kapot ratri chhaye heneche nishcho hoy ami je dekhechi protikar hin shakter oporadhe bicharer bani nirobe nibrite kade for sure this is about the unfairness of this incident you're right i must say i don't think that detainee suffered this whole incident without reacting not at all the person who was responsible for the killings and the inquiry commission paid dearly for it who was it marshal no the district magistrate douglas what happened to him on 30th april 1932 two second year students of midnapur college pradyot bhatacharya and prabhanshu shekhar pal took revenge by shooting douglas to death you had said that even gandhi ji had visited this place that was after 6 whole years of the shooting incident gandhi ji visited hijli on the 17th november 1937 after that the women's jail was closed down that year and in 1938 the hijli detention camp was closed down too and then this became the iit building not so fast the time had not come for that yet the detention camp was opened again in 1940 but it was hurriedly closed again in 1942 due to the second world war on one side there was america britain france and russia while on the other side there was germany italy and japan by then japan had almost reached the borders of india therefore to help the british the americans sent their air force down here they created runways and hangars in chakulia dudkundi and kalaikunda near kharagpur This place, hidden by dense jungles, was ideal for their headquarters and radio control room. The American Air Force went back in 1945 once the war ended. All this while, we were discussing the tortures of British rule in India. But all Britishers were not tyrants. There were some people who actually did things to help the people of our country. especially in the field of education we owe it to the british for initiating western education in this country but how did this building become an iit building after the second world war got over the british needed specially educated people to help them reconstruct places to make new factories they needed engineers for the growth of science and technology the idea of iit started in this building while the britishers were still here yes nobel prize winner dr a v hill was appointed to take a look at the state of education in our country he recommended an institute modeled on the massachusetts institute of technology in america according to that the central advisory board of education and sir ardeshir dalal put their efforts in setting up a committee in the year 1945 the committee comprising of scientists teachers and industrialists was put up under the leadership of nalini ranjan sarkar this committee in their report proposed the establishment of a higher technical institute then head of interim government jawaharlal nehru and education member in charge maulana abul kalam azad accepted the proposal to build the eastern higher technical institute on 19th february 1947 According to the Sarkar committee report it was recommended that this institute was to be formed somewhere in eastern india and the then chief minister of bengal dr bidhan chandra roy favored hijli although the preliminary work for iit had started some time before that already in kolkata at 5 esplanade row east but that's a different story we were discussing the story of this building what subhash chandra had said actually came true what came true dadu as he said 
on the blood of the martyrs we built up the edifice of freedom and this is the place where we heralded a new beginning the first ever indian institute of technology was started over here what was the date huh? which date the start of iit in this building oh yes it was on the 18th august 1951 the then central education minister maulana abul kalam azad inaugurated this on a special occasion along with the then governor of west bengal kalashnath kadzu chief minister dr bidhan chandra roy and the first director professor gyan chandra ghosh afterwards iit expanded massively later on in 1990 part of this building was transformed into the nehru museum of science and technology It is so interesting. It's unique indeed, the history of this building. It was constructed as the headquarters of the Hijli district, but was never used for that purpose. Then, it was used to keep the under trial detainee revolutionaries. Only to witness to an extreme incident of torture by the Britishers on the Indians who bled on the soil of this building. The American Air Force from so far away made this their base. and lastly the establishment of iit very nicely put did you say you know the poem prashno yes i know it let's do something let's recite the poem together to commemorate those brave freedom fighters who dedicated their lives for the freedom of our country bhagwan tumi juge juge doot pathay chho bare bare दया ही संसारी, तारा बोले गलो,